Captain, we're going to learn how to do layer animation and how to animate a camera. So I have my moth here that's supposed to fly in, and I'm going to animate him frame by frame. But I want to do some computer animation so I can track where he's supposed to be while I'm animating him. So let's create a new layer, and we'll call it Moth Ref. And then on this layer, I'm going to go before my moth appears. I'm going to take my red color and just color in a circle about as big as he's going to be. And then I need to extend this drawing, so I'll go as long as the moth is on screen, so about 165, and I'll click that frame and press F5 to extend my exposure, or I can right click and say extend exposure. So now I have a red dot that lasts for as long as the moth is on screen. So what layer animation does is you set keyframes and it'll keep track of position, rotation, or any other effect that you have keyframed. And then what Harmony does is it'll interpolate all the in-between frames. So I'll show you an example here. And when you're animating, you want to make sure that this animate button is turned on. If it's turned off, it won't record your adjustments. To create a layer motion, the first thing I want to do is set a keyframe. So that's this button up here, insert keyframe. And you'll see it creates a little dot right here on stage. So if I go to frame 100 and I do that again, you'll see it creates a keyframe and this line also appears. If this line is not appearing, then you want to go up to your preferences, go to general, and unselect the stop motion keyframes. So what that does is, if this is unchecked, it will automatically create layer motion for you. If you don't want it to do that, then you can click this check mark and it won't create interpolation between your keyframes. So depending on your preference, I switch between those two a lot, depending if I'm doing puppeted animation or more frame by frame animation. So I'm on frame 100 and I'm gonna move this ball using my transform tool. And you'll see this blue circle appear. This is your pivot point. This is where the object is gonna rotate around and pivot from. So you can see if I go to the outside corner and get my rotation tool, it rotates around this pivot point, which isn't necessarily what we want. We want to move this pivot to be in the center. But if I have my transform tool on and I try to move the pivot, you'll see a ghost of where the pivot used to be. So this just temporarily moves the pivot point, which is useful if you're animating. But if you want to move it permanently, you have to use the advanced animation tools, which I've moved right here. And if you don't see those, it's under Windows, toolbars, and advanced animation. So for example, if I select my rotate tool, and then I move my pivot, and then I go back to my transform tool, and then I unselect it, and then select it again, you'll see our pivot is in the center now. So that's how you move a pivot if you want your character to rotate around a certain point. Now, since I'm on frame 100, and the second keyframe in the layer motion, if I were to move this circle over here, You'll see it's created all the in-between frames, so it goes from one point to the other. And I can also add a keyframe in the middle by clicking in the middle and clicking adding keyframe button, moving it up to a different spot, maybe rotating it, scaling it. And you now see we have three keyframes of layer motion. Pretty cool, but it looks kind of unnatural. So that's what easing is for. The same way we do easing with frame-by-frame -frame animation, we can also do with layer motion. And the way easing works is it favors one side or the other. And the way to create easing on your animation is you can either select your entire layer motion and then use this drop down box over here to select what kind of easing you want, or you can select a keyframe and then set what easing you want on the layer motion after it. So on this keyframe, we've set sort of an S shape to it. So what that does is it'll be slow in the beginning, speed up in the middle, and then really slow out on the end. So we get a motion like this. <laughs> if we select a curve like this, this is slow in. So it'll start off really slow and then be really fast as it gets to the end. And if we select the opposite curve, then it'll start out fast and end out really slow. So if we select all of our motion tween and select this really natural kind of S right here in the middle, you can see that each one of these has different extremes. So this one is a soft easing, and this one's more of a harsh poppy easing. And this one's just right in the middle, sort of a Goldilocks easing. So now our ball has really soft easing on all of its keyframes. So that's how you create layer motion. Let's animate this ball so that it follows the path of the moth in our animation.
So now we have our layer motion all created. So this layer motion right now just moves a red circle around. But what we can do is we can actually turn that red circle into frame by frame animation using these same tools that we use to animate our cat here. So just to illustrate as an example, I'm gonna draw a number one here representing frame one. Then I'm gonna advance two frames and click my create duplicate drawing which keeps the same artwork, but it's technically a different drawing. So if I edit it and draw the number two on it, you'll see it goes from one to two. And then again, if I go two more frames and create a duplicate drawing and draw the number three, I have frame by frame animation happening underneath where my keyframes are. So to edit these, you can select these three options. So here, if I have this option selected, it will drag both my drawing and my keyframes from my layer motion. If I have just this selected, then it'll only modify the keyframes of my layer motion. So if you want to move your keyframes around, but not have it affect your frame by frame animation, this is the option you'd use. If I select this option, then it lets me move my drawings around without editing my layer motion. So this is what we're going to be using mostly when we're doing frame by frame animation with keyframes on top. So I have my frame by frame of one, two, three. What I can do is with this selection on, I can select these drawings, hit control C to copy, and then control V to paste. And it'll paste my frame by frame animation underneath my keyframes. So you can probably see now how I can create a looping animation of a moth and it'll follow along with our path. An even easier way instead of just pasting every time you want it to cycle is you can right click and say paste cycle. And then you pick the number of cycles that you want. We'll just enter 10. And you can also change what cycle type you want, whether it just goes forward, one, two, three, one, two, three, reverse, three, two, one, forward, then reverse. So it'll go one, two, three, two, one, and then reverse forward, which is three, two, one, two, three. So it kind of ping pongs back and forth. So we're just going to go normal, press OK. And it has inserted our cycle of one, two, three throughout our whole entire animation, but kept the layer motion intact. So when we play it, it looks like this. And if I wanted to edit this animation without the layer motion even animating, I would go into my drawing view. So now I can see my animation all on its own and I'm not distracted by the layer motion and I can edit it in place, do my onion skin properly. So this is how I will animate my moth. So now we have our moth animation. So this consists of frame by frame animation happening underneath keyframed layer motion. So you can see our keyframes are on top and then our frame by frame drawings changing underneath. So when we play it, it looks like this. So let's say I wanted to make a global change to this animation. Well, I could go through and just manually move everything, but the easiest way to do it is to actually turn off your animate button. So when you're animating, you want to make sure that's turned on. But if we turn it off and then let's say scale him up just on one keyframe, it'll scale up the entire animation. So again, if we did that with the animate button on, it would just record this scale on this keyframe. So it just scales up for that one keyframe. So with the animate button off, you could move it to a different position, rotate it, and adjust it that way. So let's say I wanted to add a camera movement to this scene. Well, to create a camera, we go down to our plus button right here and go to plus camera. You could also go up to insert camera and it'll add it on the bottom of your scene. So with the camera, you actually can't make any adjustments to the camera itself until you add a peg to it. So it's very important to add a peg when you create a camera. So we'll select our camera and select our add peg button and it'll add a camera peg. So now, just like with the layer motion, we can add keyframes and then adjust the position, rotation and scale so we can zoom in and rotate with the camera. So I'm gonna add a camera move to the end of my scene here. And when I don't want layer motion, like it's creating right here, so I'm gonna click the stop motion keyframe button and that'll remove that interpolation between those two keyframes. And because it's a camera, I wanna make sure to have some easing on it. So I'm gonna select this natural S shape in the middle. A camera without easing will look pretty jarring, so make sure to keep your easing in mind. 
And then on the last keyframe here, I'm going to scale my camera down, which will zoom in. And I'll also adjust the position so it's closer to his treasure chest. So it looks like this. And that's how to animate with layer motion and cameras. Next, we'll move on to painting our background and importing it.